Jesus, you are holy, and I'll preach your name.
Yes, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. What a wonderful thing to be able to praise God tonight. We're going to pray. We're praying for many people for salvation tonight and also for healing. Want to pray for Latoya, Brazil, and Dana, Sydney, Steve, and Greg for salvation, as well as Isaac, uh, Sarah, Rodney Ivan, Brian, the Gonzalez family, and Court. And then we're praying for healing for several folks tonight, for Earl, Donnie, Sydney, Isaac, uh, Genevieve, Brian. want to pray for recovery for our sister Tamara as well. And then uh, Maria is, is asking we'd be praying for traveling mercies for her. We want to remember our leadership church. We want to remember the Prescott Conference. We've been praying and fasting for that, believing God for great things out of that conference. Amen. We want to pray for that. This That's going to beginning, uh, be beginning on Monday. And so we want to lift that in prayer and uh, that God would launch out workers. Amen. Raise up workers. And so uh, we're going to pray tonight. We'll lift our hearts, lift our voices. We want to ask if our brother Antonio would open us up in prayer. Let's pray, church. Father, we thank you for your grace, your kindness, your mercies, and your long suffering, God. We lift to you our hearts and minds. Lord, I'm asking that you have right of way in the midst of your people this evening, Lord God. Strengthen these, Lord God, in the power of Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house this evening, God. We're asking your anointing on the preaching and the man of God that you would stir our faith and enlarge our hearts to receive your word. God, move even this week. God, I pray for this conference in Prescott, God, that you would raise up workers for the harvest, God, cities and nations to be touched. God, move upon our nation. God, move upon the nation of Israel, God. Move upon our city here in Jacksonville, God. Give us fruit that remain in all that we do, Lord God. Meet every need, both spoken and unspoken, on his prayer request. She, God, save the lost, even tonight, as we give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Welcome to church tonight. Amen, amen. Turn and greet a neighbor. Welcome somebody out tonight. Yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound by Jesus to see. Glory to God, he set me free. He set me free, yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound by Jesus to see. Glory to God, he set me free. Hey, welcome out. Thanks so much for coming to the Door Christian Fellowship Church. We have just a couple of announcements before we get into the preaching of the word. Before we get into the announcements, I'd just like to show you real quick on our app where you can find all the information of the upcoming events. From the home screen on our app, you simply click on weekly calendar to see all the things that are coming up. For those of you who'd prefer a paper calendar, you can find one at the front desk in the entrance to the church. Every Sunday we begin at 9.30 with Sunday school from ages three and up. We also have our new converts class at 9.30 a.m. That is followed by our morning service at 10.30 a.m. In the afternoon at 6.30, we wanna invite you back for our evening service. It's not the same as the morning service. Uh, it's the fresh word of God for your life at that time. Also on Sunday evenings at 6.30, we have our children's church ministry. That's for kids who are three years old up to sixth grade. On Monday, we begin the week with morning prayer. Every morning, the building is open from 5 to 10 a.m. You can come and pray, lay holy God, before you go about your day. On Tuesdays at 7 p.m., we have our 180 ministry. The 180 ministry is geared toward helping those who are struggling with addictions and besetting sins. On Wednesdays, we have our midweek service at 7 p.m. And on Thursdays, Tenemos el Estudio Bíblico en Español a las 7 de la tarde. Fridays at 10.30, there's the Mommy and Me Outreach. That's specifically geared toward mommies with kids who are five years old and younger. On Saturdays, we have our local outreach at 3 p.m., followed by our City Light Cafe at 7.30 p.m. Many of our Saturdays, we have an impact team going out of town to support one of our baby works or another sister church. Make sure you check on the calendar to find when and where those are going. Many people struggle with reading their Bible on a regular basis. That's why we've set up a reading plan that you can follow on your app. Speaking of reading, we have a church library that's open every other Sunday. Check the calendar to find out when. 
All right. We got a lot of things to hit the ground running in 2024. And a couple of those things are coming up right this month. Um, tonight, right after service, we need some young men to help out, uh, to help see Ray out in the City Light Cafe area. What they're going to do is they need to get some of the things off the wall because uh, Brother Wally's going to come in and paint that place. Amen. And uh, we get a fresh, a fresh coat for a fresh year. Amen. But we need some help. Uh, gentlemen, if you could help uh, with Sea Ray to get that, uh, get that stuff off the walls right after service tonight. If, you, if we just uh, join together and, uh, and get it down, Sea Ray said he'd buy everybody dinner if we're not done within 15 minutes. So no, just kidding. <laughs> but anyway, we do need some help with that. Please, please, uh, guys, if you could give us a hand with that, especially if you're involved in the Say Light Cafe ministry. Um, all right, looking at a couple of events this month, a couple of things that are coming up right away. Uh, we do have the Prescott Conference uh, starting next week. Actually, uh, yeah, Monday, uh, Monday evening, going through Friday. Be praying about that. You can also uh, live stream that. Uh, there's several places you can find that online. Um, uh, we will be obviously having regular services here. Uh, okay, on the 14th, we begin revival with Ernie Toppin. Amen. And that's going to be the 14th through the 18th. Ernie Toppin is a long-term minister of the gospel, a uh, very talented man, uh, got a lot of uh, CDs and stuff when we were with the teens a hundred years ago, we used to listen to his stuff all the time. He's got some very good, very good things and very good ministry. And so we're really looking forward to that. That's going to be followed up by a men's discipleship on the 19th. That's Friday. Uh, at, uh, prayer will be at 7 p.m., 8 p.m. It'll begin the, we'll begin the men's discipleship. We are going to be starting home Bible studies this month. They will be officially starting the 26th of January. Uh, we wanted to give us time, you know, we didn't want to just start and then stop uh, back and forth. We're going to start the 26th of January. We're going to be uh, rolling out the home Bible studies. We will have a list of, of uh, leaders and their homes, their locations for those. That will be posted in the foyer. And then also some of that limited information will be on the app as well. Um, Let's see. Okay, there's baby shower for Victoria Smith on the 8th of January, 7 p.m. Yes, amen. And so our sister, uh, they're excited about their second child, bringing her, uh, Michael and Victoria bringing that into the world. And then Brother John and Alexa, they're celebrating their baby. And so we're going to give them a baby shower on the 29th of January. That'll be at 7 p.m. And you can speak to Lynn Davis for the big gift on both of those showers. Okay, man, what else? Okay, the Financial Peace University is kicking off the, on January 7th. It's going to be Sunday p.m., uh, Sunday at 4 p.m., sorry. Sunday at 4 p.m. will be the first uh, Financial Peace University class with Brother Kevin Babcock. And then uh, a couple other things at the end of the month. 26th is going to be a busy uh, weekend, uh, busy. Um, the, the, actually, hold on. Uh, there's one I forgot. This Sunday morning, after Sunday morning service, we're going to have a water baptism. So that's, that's one thing. And then, um, and then on the 26th, we have an impact team heading down to Pensacola for uh, Brother Nate Brown, Pastor Nate Brown down there. And so, like I said, we're hitting 2024 running. Let's go. And uh, believing God for, for fruit from that. Uh, he still has fruit from the last impact team that we sent down in June of 2023. And so there is a sign-up sheet out there. You can sign up for the impact team uh, on that sign-up sheet or through the app. Please do so as soon as possible. If you can do that, that will really help. I've got to get um, housing set up for us and everything, travel uh, arrangements, etc. So if you could, the sooner you can sign up for that, if you're going to be able to go, please do so so that we can get all that squared away. On January 28th, sorry, hang with me. We just got two more things, okay? 28th, we've got, uh, we're celebrating Paolo and Nancy are going to get married the 28th. Amen. And then on, the, on February 4th, uh, Brother Sam and Ali are getting married. Amen. So back-to-back -back weddings. Bless God. That's awesome. I'm excited, man. Mm. And so uh, for, for Aaliyah's wedding, they're asking that you would, if you're going to go stay for the uh, 
the reception afterwards. If you're going to stay for the reception afterward, please sign up for that. There is a sign-up sheet out there in the foyer. If you can't find something to sign up for out here, around here, uh, you're not trying very hard. Amen. <laughs> but that's all we have for announcements. Finally, let's give God praise as the ushers come. Father, we do thank you, Jesus. We bless your matchless name, God. We magnify you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, you know, everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people do uh, New Year's resolutions, and uh, we ought to resolve. Let's be generous in 2024. Let's be generous to the work of God, and let's see what God will do this year. Amen? Let's give, and I just want to ask Brother Tony, would you bless the offering, please? singers, musicians, and uh, thank you, Pastor Spicer, for a lot of announcements. Hallelujah. So we'll try to remind you of those every time you come to church. There's a lot of stuff going on. And uh, really excited about getting into the home Bible studies come the end of the month. We really long to get a youth Bible study twice a month up towards Richland so somebody can open a house and, uh, you know, that way, and you'd like to help with that accommodate that would be great let let us know right away also as far as bible studies go some some of you are thinking well you know you got guys for that there's people going to do that listen it's a great thing it's like uh it's like this the body of christ is many members and it's it's a big church but you know each cell is a important part each individual but then you also can break it up like this on friday nights little groups here and there getting in the word, fellowshipping, praying for one another, reaching into neighborhoods, and it's going to be a great time. So maybe you think uh, you don't, you'd like to teach, you don't know, you can open your house, you can still talk to Pastor Spicer. You never know, amen. And we could use more help. There's uh, a lot of people around, and we could use the help. Second Peter chapter 1 tonight. And I was doing, uh, as you see, the, you know the app, uh, you can find announcements and stuff on the app, and generally, they're all there, but there's just sometimes things just get slipped in. And so pay attention to what's going on. But uh, we have a Bible reading program on there. And so uh, a lot of folks in the world, or some anyway, might feel funny about that. I don't need a program to read my Bible. Uh, you don't need a program. But, you know, I use a it's a McShane reading program, and I like it a lot. It, it's just something I do every morning before I read anything or do anything. While my coffee is cooking, before I leave the house, whatever, I'm reading my Bible, but it keeps me on track uh, to fill my, my heart as I begin my day. That's not the only Bible reading I do. That's just my start, you know, and it's, it's, it's a really good thing, and I encourage you to read daily. So here it was, the first of the year, Monday, and I you know, just, just follow this reading, and then I'll, oftentimes uh, I'll be in one book in the chapter 20, but what I'll do is after I read, then I go back and read chapter 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 2, 3, you know, because I want to catch the whole history of something, and uh, God moves me that way and stirs me. But you know, this Monday on the 1st, I'm starting a fast, you know, like many of us, it was good, and I'm fasting, and I'm uh, coming to prayer right before I leave the house, I'm sitting down to read, and I open my Bible um, program, and there it is. It's starting out at Genesis 1, and, and I remembered, I was reading through this program last year, and it started there also. I've read Genesis chapter 1 probably 100 times this year, but, the pro, you know, my daily reading, it's, it's there this time, 
And I, and I was reading in that and thinking, Genesis 1. Then it went to Acts 1. Then it went to Ezra 1. And then Matthew 1. And honestly, folks, I was thinking to myself, I read my Bible all the time, year after year, day after day, and then I study, and then I do you know, sermons and, and workshops and different things, and, and know the word and learn it. But I'll tell you, I, I couldn't believe it. Just, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I said, I'm back in Genesis 1. How many hundreds of times have I read Genesis? I'm not saying I, my mom is, if you've been saved 45 years, you should be reading 100 times too. You know, and I, like, Genesis 1, Acts 1. As for what, and then it dawned on me, because I really did, I was thinking, this is all rudimentary, um, beginning stuff that we all should read and know. Uh, Ezra is also very significant. I'll talk about that in a moment. But Matthew 1, the, the beginning of the Gospels, the account of Jesus Christ coming to the earth. Genesis, God's beginning of all things. Acts, the beginning of the church. And it hit me like a ton of bricks by the time I got to prayer and I sat down before the Lord just to pray. I thought, man, God, you, you're, you're, you got me right back on square one. Put my whole life there is what I said in prayer that morning. Ring my bell. You know, just tune me up. Help me. I don't ever want to think that this is old stuff. Hello. Hello. And you say, well, you're an old guy. I know. But I mean, it can't get old. You know, I've read those same chapters literally, literally hundreds and hundreds of times. And uh, any Christian saved and staying saved, kept in the grace of God for a lot of decades should be reading like that. But, you know, as I sat there that morning and I'm fasting and, you know, for me, I don't have to wait till day three to start feeling like... All we do is I preach on it or talk about it, and I feel like I'm in day 10, you know, fasting, you know. I like food. But uh, I was feeling, you know, kind of, I don't know what the word is. But I sat in prayer that morning, and God just kept hounding me on these first things, first things, how he shows us, how he first made man, first began the whole situation of life, how he revealed who he is, how the church began, book of Acts. Ezra is the beginning of the restoration of Israel after they've been judged and they've been, you know, sent out of uh, Jerusalem and, and, and judged for years and living in captivity. Matthew is the coming of the Savior, the culmination of centuries of the promises of God, the Savior coming to the earth. And so I was reading this, and my eyes were, re I was refreshed, man. I thought, that is the simplest and first things uh, many of us have learned, and we, we go over, and, if, you know, if you learn anything about the, the exile of, of uh, Judah and, and Israel out from Jerusalem and out from their land and into Babylon, and you know that story, it's, it's, it, is, it takes another beginning to get them going again. And these are all about the beginnings, and as clearly as I ever have heard that morning, I was praying and I kept reflecting on this. I turned to 2 Peter chapter 1. Listen to what Peter says as he begins that second epistle. Verse 1 says, Simon Peter, he's the guy writing, he's only a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that called us, has called us to glory and virtue. Whereby. Now Peter's starting, let me just say a couple words here before I read on Peter is starting this letter, just identifying himself, he's an apostle. If you know Peter's story, man, there was a day when you would have wrote Peter out of the program. He failed miserably. He's restored. He became a great leader and apostle. His faith has been rekindled, and he's speaking of following Christ and who we are. And he says, you know what? According to his divine power, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So here's Peter. This was a man that had 
no strength at one point in his life. The night of Jesus' betrayal, Peter couldn't stand. Peter couldn't testify. Peter couldn't even identify, be identified as someone in new Christ. He cowered it down, and he backslid. But you know, he got restored. And this is the man writing this. He says, listen, I'm going to tell you some things according to this truth. According as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that is called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge temperance, to temperance patience, and to patience godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness and brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacks these things is blind, can't see far off, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail or fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it necessary or meet that as long as I'm in this body or tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. He's saying, I think it's so very important to remind the church and the saints to go over this from time to time and, and stir your thinking and your faith. You need to understand that God has given you every single thing you need to grow and excel and reach your destiny. Amen. Should have got a bunch of amens. Really, you have. Now, I know there's times you don't feel like that. You're wondering what's wrong with you, what's wrong with God, what's wrong with your spouse, what's wrong with, you know. But he says here, and I want to talk about one of the wonders of what we've obtained. We have obtained salvation we couldn't possibly have gotten any other way. Man, I'm, you start there with me. You, if you're saved, you have something that most of the world does not have. Many people even have lots of religion, but they don't know Christ, and they don't know salvation. You and I have obtained salvation, number one. And because we've obtained salvation, Peter says what you got with that, that just a part of it all is divine power, God's power, God's ability to work in you, Miracles, God's ability to transform you. Just as Peter was not always the saint that he is when he's writing this. Peter was a man like every one of us. Peter had failures. Peter had struggles. Peter was very carnal. Peter was very uh, brash. He was very outspoken. He was very self-willed. And, uh, you know, he's just a man. But you know what? Here he is, this great apostle writing to us. And he's saying, you know how we get perfected? Now, let me say that as I start. We need to perfect our faith, folks. I do. You do. And Peter says, you know what? It's absolutely doable because we have entered into life and godliness through this salvation by faith. We're in a whole different level. This isn't being better than others, better than the sinners, better than other saints. It just means God has come into us. And it's a total game changer. And what he has given to us, verse 4 says, is great and exceeding precious promises. But by these, you can further be a partaker of the divine nature. But things can really begin to change. There's great promises here. We're partakers. We're sons, daughters of God. He's put a heavenly deposit within our lives. If you're saved, the Holy Spirit has begun to establish himself in you. 2 Corinthians 1, 21 says, Now it is God who establishes both us and you in Christ. He anointed us, 
placed his seal on us, put his spirit in our hearts as a pledge as what is to come. You know, when you get saved, man, I, I got saved. Basically, I got right with God finally on a Sunday night and determined that that night in church I was going to live for God. I didn't know how. I just determined, man, I got to do this. And uh, not knowing much more than that, he touched me. Monday, I was much the same as I was before, only I found myself trying not to be nasty, vile, typical way I was. I'm just trying to change. I had someone even ask me, what's up with you? I mean, I wasn't mad or upset or something, but I just wasn't being the same old vile man, you know? Things changed. Tuesday, I'm struggling along. Wednesday, I go to drink beer with the guys and invite them all to church, you know, after work. And I, don't, I just got saved. I don't know. I hadn't heard no preaching on any of this. I'm just thinking I'm going to drink moderately now. But you know what happened, man? I couldn't mix that alcohol with the spirit that was in me anymore. It's like oil and water. All of a sudden, man, everything is different. This is what Peter's talking about. There was a divine presence in me. He said, we don't do that no more, Dave. I said, man, then you got to help me. And he said, that's what I'm trying to do. Amen. Amen. He's going to help us. He has placed his seal on us, put his spirit in our hearts as a pledge of what is to come. Greater things are coming still. The NIV, New International Version states, he set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what's going to come. Ephesians 1, verse 13 says, In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is a guarantee of our inheritance till the redemption of the purchased possession of the praise of his glory. What God do, does and what he wants to do and what Peter's referring to is if you fully have gotten saved, you've given your life to Christ, you know what? God has put a deposit in you of his own spirit. That's why he said, man, I don't know. I struggle all the time. Probably why he's, he's saying we don't do that no more. Stop being that way. Change those thoughts. Turn around. Go a new direction. God's trying to help us. He has put this in us. He's really gone all out. This is great, the great giving nature of our Lord and Savior. You know, you didn't have to work to get saved, and you don't have to work to, for God to put that deposit in you. He's going to want to change us. And it is by grace we've been saved through faith. It's not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. It's not by works. So no one can boast. So we didn't earn any of this. This is what Peter's writing about. When you got saved, man, God put something in you and it started working and it's, you can now be a partaker of his divine nature. You can have what he has. You can be like he wants you to be. You can be holy. And he says to add these things to your faith. And so it was funny to me that whole morning prayer meeting on Monday, the first day of the fast, I'm telling you, it was like, Genesis 1, maybe I'll change the reading program. You know, as, you know, first of the year, you know, Genesis 1, Acts 1. And I know Ezra, I know this story. Ezra 1, Matthew 1. And I'm thinking, man, I feel like I'm back in kindergarten for Christians. And then again, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, well, is there any room for improvement? <clears throat> Maybe my wife's right. Amen. A little room. There's room for improvement. Is there room for improvement in you? For growth? So you can't improve on the simple act of saving grace that redeemed you, but you know what you can do? You can grow. And this is what the Lord triggered in me Monday morning. You know, you may have been around a while, maybe not. You may know a lot, understand a lot, but you need to have room for improvement, always. This is why he says, you know, for this very reason. I was thinking just in the prayer room, this wasn't in my sermon. I know what I'm preaching. I've prepared the sermon. But, you know, I'm sitting in there in the prayer room, winding down, just getting ready to get up out of my chair and come this way. And I thought to myself, I have heard 
from men and women over the years, numbers of times, actually, how they just started coasting because they thought they were doing so good. And they're nowhere to be found today. They coasted right out to backsliding. They just thought they were okay. They'd been around a while. It's all good. But Peter says, you know, for this reason, I won't be negligent to remind you always of these things. Though you know it and you're established in the present truth, I think it's right as long as I'm alive to stir you up, he says. Thank God. Because we haven't arrived yet. For this reason, so you don't grow lazy. You know what people think they got it made? They're lazy. Well, I had someone told me the other day, you know, retirement always comes up. I'm not retiring, but they... You know, I said, oh, no, I would. and they said, yeah, everybody I know that just retires straight across the board dies. I said, I've seen that. You know, stay busy if you got retired. Amen. Stay alive. I know people in this church are retired. They're doing fine. They don't just sit down and die. But, you know, this is what people do when they get spiritually lazy or they feel they've arrived or there's nothing more for God to do. They feel they're spiritually finished, completed, There's nothing else. Perfection. We're not perfect. Well, I've done all. I've experienced all. I had a good friend in the ministry uh, 35 or 6 years ago. Long time ago now that I think of it. 36 years ago. And I went to Southern California to Pioneer Church. He was there. I was all excited. And he was too because we were old friends Uh, even knew each other before we were saved. And I just got to town. I'm in his neck of the woods, and we're we're fellowshipping. We're getting coffee whenever we can see each other, you know, meet here and there, outreaching at his church. He's outreaching at my church. And I'm only there until his first conference comes up, and he tells me, he says, Dave, sorry to tell you this, but I'm leaving. I said, leaving? He says, yeah, we're going to go pioneer somewhere else. I said, shoot, man, I just got here. I thought we were be working together. He says, I know, I was thinking that. And he said, I said, well, what moved you to want to move on? He says, well, I think, you know, I've been here two and a half years, and I've already preached everything I could preach. We were young preachers. I said, oh, yeah, you probably did. <laughs> we were young preachers back then. He was dead serious. He said, I said, no, nah, you couldn't. Have. He says, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I think I can't. I don't know what else I can give these guys, so I'm going to start again. You know, He's still in the ministry, a very good minister. He's doing very well, pastor of a good church, built other works, missionary works, everything. But you know, this is, this, is, this is a trap if we're not careful. We can feel like, well, we've exhausted ourselves. We've done all we can do. We know all. What more can we learn? Peter says some of these things need to be stirring in you and working in you. In our text, in verse 8, he says these things need to be in you. Yeah, you know, this perfecting your faith, this building it up, this growing. He says they got to be in you and abound because they make you that you shall neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacks these things becomes blind. He can't see far off. He's forgotten he was purged from his old sins. He's saying, man, guys, you, you, you must understand there is room to improve always. Amen. Room to grow. Room to grow. You know, the Holy Ghost is our greatest strength and ally, but you better get some spiritual exercise. And you're not going to add anything to your faith if you just sit back to coast. And Peter said, if you lack these things, you're short-sighted, even the blindness, you've forgotten You've forgotten what's taken place. You were cleansed from your old sin. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you see no room for improvement in your life, you are finished. And I hope there's no one here that can sign on with that. Okay, you know, no, no, you're not. Don't be. Hallelujah. Maybe you feel, well, I feel barren. And I don't bear the fruit. You know, you, you can't... Uh, I have friends in the West Coast, in Arizona, different places out west, and they know I, I like food, um, fruit, vegetables, and you know I've always tried to grow a little something here where I lived, and 
And so numbers of them said, man, living in North Carolina, that rains and everything. Boy, you guys probably got trees and gardens and this. And I said, you know, you, you, you want to have some fruit out here, you got to work your butt off. The elements work against you here. There, no fruit just grows in North Carolina. <laughs> you have to make it grow. You have to, it's the same thing with the fruit in your life. You want it, you better work a little bit at it. And Peter writes and says, you know, you got to add something here to your faith. Add virtue. Now, that sounds simple enough or easy enough, but, you know, <clears throat> it's difficult. Virtue. Here's a lot of uh, ways to describe it out of the dictionary. Goodness, virtue, virtuousness, righteousness, morality, ethicalness, uprightness, upstandingness, integrity, dignity, rectitude, honesty, honorableness. Virtue means quite a bit, folks. And Peter says, add it to your faith. Don't just believe in God. Don't just know that he saved you. But now begin to add this in, like build some muscle, spiritual muscle. One of the things here is start building yourself some virtue. Irreproachableness, blamelessness, purity, pureness, a lack of corruption. And then he has a little sentence. Y'all dictionaries will do that. This one says, promptness was not one of his virtues. He been, you know, just good points, you know, good quality, strong points, strong suits. These are things that are important. They're really important. One of the great antonyms to virtue is disadvantage. I thought that really interesting if you do a word study. It, it, you know, virtue seems like a lot of work. I, mean, I got to be on my toes. I have to be up front. I have to be honest with all. A uh, preacher friend of mine I really love would always say that, folks, let me be honest with you. And I would tell him all the time, you better be honest with us. You know, and just, you know, I think he got cured of saying it. He said, all the time, all the time, all the time. Uh, you know, we are honest. He is, you know, he's just, just a force of habit saying something. But I want to tell you, we're called to be honest no matter what. We're called to have virtue. We're called to have that holy dignity, if you want to say, you know, that nobleness, the soul of spirit. Then he says, add to that perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness. You know, this is the part where many people struggle to keep pushing, pushing through, persevering, persevering, fighting and scrapping, you know, and adding godliness to that while you're doing that, while you're pushing on, adding godliness. And to godliness, he says, add brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, add love. Verse 5, besides this, give all diligence. I should have said that earlier. The word diligence literally means work very hard. You can look that up in any dictionary you can find. You can look it up probably on Wikipedia and find the same thing. The word diligent doesn't just mean, yeah, you know, think about it, man. Get serious about it. It means work and sweat. Make this happen. And what is it he said give diligence for? What is it he says to, to do with that? To add to your faith that you now have in Christ that what has taken place and saved you. Add to that virtue, the right life. Add to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. And godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, add love. You know, really and truly, um, I, we, when, when do we ever feel we had just enough knowledge, too much knowledge? We don't. There's not a need for knowledge. Add it. You get it out of the Bible. You get it out of right living. Temperance means moderation in your actions or your thoughts, restraining yourself. But it means this, a habitual moderation, not just having good moments where you can behave. No, no, a life that behaves. Moderation. Temperance. These are important, but I want to tell you something here. Patience, forbearance, is the ability to endure difficult circumstances. So on top of wanting to Add the virtue, live virtuously. On top of wanting to be patient, on top of all of this, you're going to have times where things are going to try to force your hand. 
your old flesh, for one. Somebody asked me not that long ago, Pastor, I've got some friends, you know, they're newly saved, and I, I wonder, should I cut them off? Well, you know, that sounds like strong words. I says, uh, do you preach to them? Yep. Are you witnessing to them? Yep. You love them? Yep. I said, and what's going on? He said, well, they just want me to do this, you know. Be on the, I said, no, 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 don't cut them off. Don't do it with them. Still got their phone number? Call them. Invite them over, but don't do the sin with them. And the issue here is to be patient with the ability to endure the difficult stuff. That's what forbearance is. And you know, brotherly kindness, you know, opportunities abound day in and day out. Give people brotherly kindness. I was, uh, I had a very, well, I didn't have a fuse. Some people say I had a short fuse. I didn't have one, amen. Just didn't have one at all. It just was quick to be nasty, you know, and not like situations and things, you know, and just very bad temper I had before I was saved. And uh, having that, I get saved, and I am required to show kindness and brotherly love. Who do you show your brotherly love to? Your brethren. Some of them brethren that drive you crazy are God's greatest gift to you. I have to love them? I'll love them. I don't have to talk to them. Well, you're not going to love them very well. People in the grocery store, people here, people cut you off in the, you know, at, the, at the traffic light, people this, that, you know. Show some kindness. I have a pastor friend in a large city decades ago. He told me this story. Mega city, you know, big one. He said that after church, they decided to eat somewhere it was way far across town. <laughs> it's just because they just wanted to eat somewhere special. The family, they went, and it was a warm day. The windows were down, and, and they're driving along, and they get to this big intersection, and they heard this commotion and screaming and back and forth, and they think, dear God, someone's going to get shot. And then it sounded so bad. And as they went by, he looked at one of his ushers in that car. <laughs> Yikes. Don't worry about that, kids. Uh, sir, there was a reason, you know. <laughs> No, we're called to love people no matter what. Be large enough to love them. Because the will of God, folks, in closing, is for us to bear fruit. And this is good fruit, man. When you can live this way, Peter says, when you can do this, he says, you know what? You will not fall short. You won't. You're not going to fall. You fail, struggle here and there, yep, but you're not going to take the fall. You're going to be able to persevere, work your way through. You're going to find your destiny for such an entrance that you made before God. Because if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, but he who lacks these things, that's short-sightedness. So you do this to make your election, your call, sure. You do these things, you won't stumble. You, such an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord. I want you to pray with me tonight. I, I want you to enter this new year with me thinking these things. God, what can I do? There is room for improvement. Improve my Christianity. Improve my demeanor. Improve my attitude. Improve my holiness. Improve me, God. He will, but you know, Peter says he will, but you have to add the necessary additives to that. You have to make the decisions that put you there. You have to do the walk that keeps you there. But the good news is Peter also said, don't worry, guys. All this stuff has already been added to you. God has put the seed in you to make it work. Follow through. Trust him and work at it. Don't grow weary, man, in good well-doing. Don't do that. Keep going. Keep working. Keep believing. Our heads are bowed. And, you know, this is something really for all of us to ponder and, and to work on and let God speak to us. But I'm going to speak to young people. 
don't, don't, you want to get set in your ways, you want to develop habits, you want to get an attitude in life, and this, get the right ones. Start where you are, even if you're a young man, a young woman, teenager, younger, I don't care. Start where you are. The more you want this from God, probably the more you're going to do to take the right steps. Mind your holiness. Know that you're walking with God. You want to please Him. I'm going to be teaching, preaching, rather, not preaching some. I was going to do a Sunday school series, but I'm going to teach, uh, preach a number of sermons and deal with real manhood and what godly womanhood is, you know, and that'll be coming up in the months to come here. But man, you know, manhood isn't being a guy that, you know, bull in the china cabinet. This is a man that can scare people, tear things apart. Oh, no, real manhood is emulating Christ. He's not a sissy at all, folks. He's, he's Christ the Lord. There's room for improvement, and God's dealing with us as a church. I really sense that. He'll deal with me, and for me, and for you. But tonight, perhaps, you, you, you've got to take that big step, that first step. Enter into that salvation His grace supplies by faith. Would you lift a hand if this is you and say, I need to get right with God tonight. I want to be saved. Hold a hand up where I can see it. Lift it up. Put it right back down, right where you're seated. Lifting that hand and saying, I want to get right with God. I want to be saved. I want forgiveness. I need God's mercy. Is there someone tonight, backslidden, unsaved, just say, this is me. Help me, Jesus. Oh, it'll make a difference. There's Christians tonight. You, you, you struggle with that when I started preaching. Man, you know, I, I'm doing the best I can. Well, well, that's good. But understand, he has put that virtue inside of us that's going to pick us up. The, the more we uh, excel, excel and try the greater his power is going to be manifest for us. And, and yeah, sometimes it's going to come with some hard knocks, you know. And you'll struggle and bumble a little as you grow, but you will grow and you will do well. Let's make 2024 a year that we excel. Let's come to this altar tonight. Stand to your feet if you would. And the altar is open if you want to pray. You come, visit with God, make an altar before him.
Thank you, Lord. Amen. Um, boy, there's such power to change what was unchangeable. So thank God for that. You trust him in that, and you make the efforts, and God's going to bring you through. Praise God. Uh, don't forget, we needed some help. I think some of the young guys all full of energy already ate on your way to church. Uh, you can go right next door and help uh, see Ray, if you would. Please help out in the uh, music room. won't take but a little while. If you guys go right in there and give him a hand. And then uh, please be uh, aware of what's happening. Uh, Brother Nate and Lindsay, they're having revival. They're having a church built. Amen. And there's got, they got people. There's converts and souls. It's beautiful. And I'm going to go down and preach at the end of the month. And so we'd like you, if you could, to please help with that outreach and help them get some, the word out. There's folks in that church from that outreach. And Brother Austin was telling me the other day, he's got folks from you. Your last outreach, still in his church, working with. I'm telling you, our outreach is make it happen. So praise the Lord. And then uh, Sunday morning, serious men's early, and Sunday school with Pastor Greg, and then uh, worship right back here. I'll be in uh, Phoenix for our leadership uh, meeting, and then right up into Prescott for conference. So be praying for us uh, in the conference week. It'll be a wonderful thing with God. We'll do praise God. Follow up on somebody, too. A lot of people saved over the holidays. From Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, there have been many, many people that have prayed, make a friend with somebody, reach them, help them, get them into church. Praise God. Brother Tony uh, Brown, why don't you close us with a word of prayer? Father God, we so thank you, Lord God, for your thank word, Lord God. We thank you for the work that you have already done, Lord God. And we are pray, Lord God, that we have, Lord God, the diligence, Lord God, to draw yes. from the work that you have already done, Lord God, that we may mature and grow in your grace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.